Hi Aquarius, welcome to April. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I start with your reading, let's go over the astrology. So Mercury is moving into Taurus on the 4th of April. We have a full moon in Libra on April 6th. Venus will move into Gemini on April 12th. And then we have a new moon solar eclipse in Aries on the 20th. And Mercury will move retrograde in Taurus on April 21st. And we'll stay in retrograde until May 14th. But we'll talk about that later. Let's see what, um, what the cards are. What does Aquarius need to know about love and relationships for the month of April? April 2023. Let's What's coming up for Aquarius? What does Aquarius need to know about love and relationships for April? The Seven of Cups, the Six of Wands, the Seven of Wands, the Lovers, The Hierophant, the King of Wands, the Knight of Pentacles, the Hermit, the Death card, the Two of Wands, and the card at the bottom of the deck is the Three of Wands. That's promising. Okay. So you start the month out with the Seven of Cups energy. That's a card of being stuck in the choices. You have multiple options available to you this month, but you're not taking action on any of them. You're just dreaming about the possibilities. Like, well, you know, I could, I could do this or I could do that. And um, you're working out, kind of it's like you're working it out in your head of what it would be like to do this or that. But you're not actually taking action to manifest any of these dreams or goals. You have the Six of Wands here crossing. So there is the potential for victory. You just have to figure out what you want and go for it. And so I feel like you're going to be making some choices this month. You're going to have to choose, make some decisions about who or what you want in terms of relationship. You have the Seven of Wands here in the past, and that's about standing up against opposition, stating, you know, setting boundaries, um, fighting for what you want. And you have the potential, you, you are the favorite person. So I feel like if you're in a relationship or considering a relationship with someone and there's any type of competition, you are the favorite person at this time, or you have been. Um, you have the lovers in the recent past. So the lovers card, that's like a, that's a major arcana. So it's similar to the two of cups, only more intense because it's a major card. So you've had a relationship that had a profound impact on your life. And now you're in this position of trying to decide, do I stay? You, it could be two things. Do I stay? Or do I go? Or you may have to choose between two paths, two people. Which one is going to be the best person for me? Um, the problem is, well, not the problem. The thing about the, the lovers is once you, it's a serious decision. It's not a choice that you need to make lightly. I mean, you know, and you know it. Because the people involved are very important to you in one way or another. 
And if you choose to walk away from, let's say you're having a choice between two people, or even, you know, if you choose to walk away from one and you choose the other, you can never go back on that decision. It'll be a done deal. So it's like once you make that decision, it's final. So you have to choose wisely. And the lovers, you have to really think about it because there could be someone in your life um, where your life would not really be the same without that person. Even though there might be problems and there might be complications, you know in your heart that this person brings something to your life that no one else can. And so you have to really think hard. Do I want to lose this person? Or do I want to make this person a permanent fixture in my life? Especially with the Hierophant coming up here, um, you could be dealing with someone who's very stubborn, very old-fashioned. That could be either you or the other person. I'm thinking it's probably the other person. Um, maybe they're not open to change, you know, because Aquarius is a little bit more... I mean, Aquarius can be stubborn, too, because you're a fixed sign. But you're more open to seeing things in a unique way. Um, you're not so stuck in the mud. Mm. But the Hierophant is about doing the right thing, following tradition. So whoever you're involved with, I think they're looking for a commitment. They don't, they don't want to have a fly-by-night, you know, friends with benefits kind of relationship. They want something solid, something that's going to last. Um, and that could be part of the, the decision you have to make. Do I want to commit to this person? Or do I want to let them go? Um, who do I want to make permanent in my life? Because I think you can't keep playing the same game. Now you do have, um, well, the King of Wands is coming up in the future. So you could be dealing with someone that has fire in their energy. Maybe an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy. Um, the King of Wands is a leader. Very outspoken, not afraid to speak their mind, maybe a little bit bossy at times, but they have a big heart. <clears throat> so that could be someone that you're dealing with, and you may, maybe one of the choices. You also have this Knight of Pentacles energy. Um, that could be an Earth sign, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. Now, the Knight would be someone a little bit more immature or maybe younger than you. The King might be on your level. But the knight also is someone who's very, uh, maybe not very exciting, but someone who's very um, reliable. Earth energy is like always there for you, no matter what. You need something, they're there. You call them up, they're there. Um, you can count on them. If you, if you leave them with a job to do, they're going to do it. Um, but it's in your negative thinking sector. So I don't know how you feel about this person. If you're thinking maybe this wouldn't work, maybe this would work. You have doubts about it. Um, I feel like the King of Wands energy, the other person, so one person might be more down to earth, more, less, uh, less making a fuss about things, you know, more, more calm. And the other person may be more dramatic, more like in your face, like, I, this is what I want. And, you know, more bossy. So I feel like you have two choices. You have to choose. Um, and with the hermit energy in your environment, you may be doing a lot of soul searching and thinking. Um, and there could be someone in your life that's tired of being alone. Maybe the other person is doing because the person in this card, in this position, the card in this position, sometimes it can uh, relate to the other person's feelings. So there could be someone in your life who's in, you're in a relationship with, but they're not, um, maybe you're separated or you're not always together. Or they're feeling lonely in the relationship, like you're not there for them. And they may be evaluating their relationship with you. You might also be evaluating, trying to figure out, you know, what do I need? Who do I need? Who is the best person for me? So before you make the choice, you really want to give it a lot of thought. Because the hermit is about taking time out to think, listen to the inner voice, maybe get advice from someone else, talk to someone, counselor, or someone, um, a family member that you respect. But also listen to your inner voice. What is your heart telling you? What is your inner voice telling you? Who is the person that brings you the most joy? Who is the person that you couldn't live without if you had to? 
I mean, Aries is uh, Aquarius is kind of an independent sign, so you're not you don't get that attached to people. You're more about friendship than deep soul connection. But even your best buddy, there are times when you know you might miss that buddy. You, you know, Aquarians really want like a best friend to go through life with. You know, you're my partner, you're my friend, we do everything together. Um, they like it a little bit less intense than some, let's like, say, the water signs. But even so, it could be a case where once that person is gone, you might really miss them in your life. So you have to think, what do I, what's important to me? Who do I want to keep? What do I have to do to keep this person in my life? Because you have also the death card is in your wish fulfillment sector. Now the death card is um, it's about ending a cycle or releasing the past. Maybe you have feelings from the past, a past relationship that you haven't been able to let go of that are stopping you from being in a relationship in the present. So the time has come to kiss it goodbye. Say, okay, yeah, that was I had a great life with this person. And maybe it was a marriage or a relationship that's no longer in your life. Maybe the person, either you broke up, got divorced, the person could have died even. Um, and maybe you're feeling like, I don't know if I could be in another relationship because I still have the memory of that old relationship. And it's interfering with your current situation. So the death card's telling you, you have to clear out the past and make room for love in the present. You have to release the past. Bless it for whatever it meant to you. It doesn't mean you're forgetting about that person. Or it doesn't mean that that person doesn't mean anything to you. But you have to make room in your heart for the new. And so the death is about clearing out the past, closing the door on the past, and allowing there to be room for the new to be born. It's kind of like moving from winter to spring. And you have these two sevens. The sevens represent transition. So I feel like you're in this transition period where you're transitioning from the past into the future. And part of that transition is releasing. Now, that being said, I feel like there's a partner. You have the two of wands here. There is someone you could partner with. Two of wands represents a potential partnership. But you're contemplating it. You're not really moving towards it. You're just thinking about it. Like, well, yeah, I think that might be a good match. Uh, I don't know. Let's just wait and see. You're kind of playing this wait and see. Let's see where it goes. But you may not have a lot of time. And you do have the three of wands here, which is usually if you put the effort in and you put energy into something, you're going to get the rewards. The three represents uh, the results of our effort. And so things coming back to you. So whatever you put out in the world is going to come back to you. Um and you have the potential for success. I mean, if you decide, if you make a decision and you say, I want this per person, I want this relationship, I want this situation, I want this partnership, it can be yours. And it may mean that if you choose one person over another, there could be some jealousy, you know, especially from the person you're leaving behind, if you, especially if you're in that two, uh, choosing between two. It may not always, I mean, this is not for everybody. I'm not saying everyone who's an Aquarius is having this decision. It could mean also, do I stay and make something work or do I walk away? So it could be that situation too, especially if you're in a committed partnership. Um, and with the Knight of Pentacles energy, you want to take your time thinking. Like, don't rush to a decision. Don't take too long. But think about, you know, what do I really need in a relationship? What is it that I really want? What would make me happy? What would be the best match for me? Think about what your needs are and which partnership could best fulfill those needs. Because I feel like you're on this edge where you have to make a commitment or walk away. So you have to decide, is this person someone I want to commit to? And if not, I may need to leave them behind. Because, But only you know the answer to that. So... This, I think this month's going to be a month of figuring out what you want and making a choice. And so choose wisely. So let's see what the um, angels have to say. What do the angels want Aquarius to know about their love life? 
relationships or anything specific. Encouragement. Your love is invaluable to the earth and to those around you. Even though you may not always see the positive effect your love has on others, trust for it does. Each time you offer love through a loving gesture, thought, or word, you plant a seed of love. And love always generates more love. Trust and continue your loving work. So I, this card is saying, don't be afraid of love. If you've had a bad experience in the past, that was the past. If you've been hurt in the past or if you lost someone you loved in the past. You know, we all go through these experiences. But it's time to live in the present. It's time to close the door on the past and try again. Uh, a lot of times, you know, if we've been hurt in a relationship or we've suffered loss, we're afraid to choose again. We're afraid we're going to go through the same thing. We don't want to experience the same pain. But nothing ventured, nothing gained, as they say. You don't want to live in a state of loneliness because you're afraid to reach out. I mean, you have to take risks in life. And you know that. So I wish you the courage to love again and choose wisely. So let's see what this astrology has to say. So you have a full moon in Libra in your ninth house. That's the house of long distance travel, higher education, um, learning, teaching. And you have the sun and Jupiter and Chiron in your third house. That's the house of your immediate family, like siblings, communication, neighborhood, um, something may, you, you may be coming back from a trip or you may be planning a trip abroad at this full moon, or you may see some truth come out that has to do with travel or like the balance is actually between, I feel like you're balancing yourself between someone close and someone far away. Um, you may have someone like a relationship with someone that's at a distance and you're seeing the truth about that. You may also have someone close where you live. Because you have the sun and Jupiter. The sun and Jupiter brings opportunity. And Chiron talks about healing. And it's in your communication house. So maybe it's time to speak up. And talk about those things that have always hurt you. Talk about those areas that are sensitive, that need healing. Talk about your hopes and dreams. Jupiter represents opportunity and optimism. I feel like at this full moon, certain truths will be revealed, but maybe it's more you need to communicate in a partnership and tell the other person how you feel and try to uh, work out some type of compromise between your needs and the other person's needs. Because that's the whole thing with, with Aries and Libra in opposition, those energies. Aries represents kind of selfish energy, me, 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 the sun's in Aries. And the moon represents the other. And in Libra, it means compromise, diplomacy, learn, being fair, fairness. So you have to question yourself. Where, am I being, where do I need to be more fair in my partnership? Where do I need to communicate more? Maybe there needs to be more of a balance between these two things. Maybe I need to communicate how I feel to a partner. Whatever it is, the truth needs to come out at the full moon. The full moon sh shines a light on whatever's been hidden. And I feel like it has to do with communication. That it's really important for you to communicate at this time. You have Mercury moving into Taurus in your fourth house. And Venus is already there with the North Node and Uranus. So there's been some shakeups in your home life. You may be thinking about moving to a new location. People may be moving in, moving out. Uh, Mercury's there now, so... There might be contracts to be signed. Um, if you're doing anything, if you're selling real estate or you're signing contracts, um, be careful if you're do it before the Mercury retrograde or do it after mid-May when Mercury goes direct because Mercury rules contracts and you don't want to be, you want to check all the details. You don't want to sign on the dotted line while Mercury's in retrograde. 
You have Mars and Cancer in the sixth house. And it's sixth house Saturn in the second. So you're working really hard for the money. You may feel like um, your finances might be... Saturn is raising your expenses. And you may be working hard to try and figure out how to raise more money. Or how, what do I need to do on my career? How do I adjust my career so that I can have more money? With Mars there, you might be working... Uh, really working hard, you know, workaholic kind of thing. Um, there might be a lot of work and you don't have time for anything else. Um, it's also a time for you to focus on your health because Mars in the sixth, wherever Mars is, that's where your energy is focused. And the sixth is the house of your day-to-day -day activities on the job, but also your health. So maybe it's time for you to get more active, to take a more active interest in your health, get on health, a healthier lifestyle. Um... It's also a time to focus on work and money. And am I making enough money? And do I need what else do I need to do? Do I need to take on more work? Do I have the energy to take on more work? Um, Neptune's been in your second house, so money's coming in and move going out at the same time. <coughs> now Venus in your fourth house is sextile Neptune in the second. So there could be some kind like Venus in the fourth house brings love and money to your home environment. So you might be fixing up your place because you're trying to create like a love nest. If you have a if you're in a relationship, you may want to make your house prettier or decor redecorate. Um Venus sextile Neptune though, if you are doing any kind of decorating, it gives you inspiration to do something really beautiful. It can also bring a very romantic, highly romanticized relationship. Um, or a period of, of romance in your existing relationship. A renewed period of romance, I should say. Now, Pluto just moved out of the 11th house. It's in your 12th house, so it's shaking up your psyche. <laughs> Everything that's hidden. Pluto wants to, if you have any kind of psychological blocks, or any kind of hidden enemies, or any kind of dealings with hospitals, prisons, areas of confinement, Pluto is going to shake that up over the next 20 years. And I feel like it's more of a psychological shakeup where it's, Pluto is going to go dig deep and bring things to the surface that you've probably hidden from yourself for years. Um, oh, never mind. Pluto's actually in your first house. I'm reading, I was reading Pisces. Excuse me. Pluto is moving into your, it's been, has been in the 12th house and has been transforming you psychologically. Now Pluto's moving in your uh, first house. <clears throat> and Pluto is changing how you appear to the world. You're going to be stepping into your power. You're going to be feeling more confident, more empowered. While Pluto's in your first house, you may have dealings with powerful people, people who may want to bully you or may want to. They might be like, you have to watch with relationships that there's not power struggles, manipulation, betrayals. Those themes might come up, but what you really need to do is stand in your power, set boundaries, don't let anyone bully you or intimidate you, learn how to wield power in a healthy way. So you don't want to be the bully, but you don't want to be the victim of the bully either. You want to just be strong, and Pluto can help you do that. Mercury is squaring Pluto. So you want to watch your communication style. If you get into an argument with someone that you're living with, you want to choose your words carefully. Don't come on too strong because you may be the intimidating person in the environment, in the argument. Mars, Mars is in your sixth house. It's trining Saturn in your second house. So if you're, if you're working towards in dealing with finances, this is a good time to do the, put in the hard work and you will see results. I mean, Saturn's asking you to tighten your belt and to get serious about your money. And so if you've been spending money like crazy and not thinking where it's going, Saturn's going to be the wake-up call that tells you, um, okay, we need to stop this. I need to see what I'm doing. Where am I spending my money? And you need to start being more disciplined with your finances. Then we have the solar eclipse in Aries, and that's happening in your third house. So an eclipse can eclipse someone from your life. It could be a sudden ending, sudden new beginning. And in your third house, that's the house of your local environment. Um, it could be siblings, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. 
It could be look, friends, neighbors. Um, this new moon, this solar eclipse is at the 29th degree of Aries. So something cycle is ending. Something that you've gotten used to may be coming to an end. It's time to kind of end a cycle that's no longer serving you. And this eclipse may ha it may happen around the eclipse. Now the good thing is the eclipse is conjunct Jupiter and the North Node. So any changes that happen around this time are going to be ultimately for the best. You may feel more positive, but it, but the eclipse is also um, squaring Pluto. So there are going to be power struggles. There might be some changes. People around you might be making changes you're not happy with. And um, you may try to prevent them. But whatever happens, whatever Pluto takes away, it's going to replace with something better. It gives you an opportunity to rebuild in a better direction. But one thing that this eclipse does not want you to do is repeat the same cycle and expect a different result. So maybe it's time, if you're not one that talks, maybe it's time to communicate. Um, change the way you approach your communication style. Maybe you have some healing to do. Maybe you need to talk to someone because you have Chiron in the third house. You have Mercury and Uranus in the fourth house. So that can bring surprise developments at home, a surprise message. Maybe someone you hear from someone that you haven't talked to in a while and they're telling you, I'm moving out or I'm moving in, you know, I'm coming back. Um, Venus is moving into your fifth house. It's in Gemini now. And Venus in the fifth, you know, the fifth house is love, romance, children, creative self-expression, um, fun. So there could be some new developments in love with Venus in your fifth house. The only issue is Venus is squaring Saturn, and Saturn's in your second house. So there could be like, yeah, I met someone, I really want to spend a lot of time with them, I want to take them out, I want to wine them and dine them, but I've got to watch my money. You may not have the money to do all that. You may be so busy working on your finances, you don't have time for love. You have to make time for love. Don't be afraid of, you know, you have to make time for love. The opportunity is there with Venus there. Um, maybe your children are coming to you for money and you don't have the money to give them. You have to tell them, look, I can't, you know, I have to, I mean, this is a, a critical time for money for you. So you want to be, uh, pay attention to your finances. Um, now this Pluto moving into your first house, it's going to be there for the next 20 years. So you're not going to do everything overnight. It's a slow, gradual process, but you are transforming at deep levels. You've already done the psychological work. And possibly, hopefully, you've eliminated or let go of any self-destructive habits. Now Pluto is asking you, you're going to change the way you are seen in the world. People are going to look to you as if you have, you're, you're going to become more empowered. You're going to step into your power. That's, what, that's the positive aspect. Pluto wants you to be powerful, not in a way where you have power over someone, but more where you empower others around you. You're like the leader that through your leadership, brings everyone, you know, it's like the rising tide lifts all boats. You're the rising tide. And the best way to use Pluto energy is to use it in a way that helps everyone, not for your own selfish needs. Because people who use Pluto, Plutonian power for their own selfish needs wind up getting destroyed by it. I mean, that's just the way, it, that's the karmic cycle. So you want to be careful with Plutonian You have, it's like, you know, you've got these nuclear warheads how do you want to use them? You don't want to destroy the whole world, you know? <laughs> so you want to be careful with the power because Plutonian power is very intense. But you're going to go through major changes during this period. And when you come out of this cycle, you're going to be like a new person, reborn, because Pluto is, represents the phoenix rising from the ashes. Sometimes Pluto can take you down to the, to the ground where you feel like you're starting over. You're rebuilding your life from ground zero. But when you rebuild, it will bring, you'll be rebuilding in, so, a more, in a stronger way and a better way. Um, then Mercury goes retrograde on the 21st, the day after the solar eclipse. And Mercury's in your fourth house. So that could, you may be revisiting issues around home and family. Maybe you're reconnecting with some family that you haven't seen in a long time. Maybe you're redoing a house. The best way to do, um, to use the Mercury retrograde energy 
is to go back to something that you started in the past but never finished. So Pluto brings transformation to yourself and your appearance. Uranus and Mercury in your fourth can bring sudden changes in the home, sudden messages coming in, sudden developments. Venus in the fifth can bring love. So there are a lot of changes happening. I feel like you're, you're going to go through a lot of changes this month. Um, but I, ultimately, Uranus wants to free you from anything, any baggage or anything. It wants to bring fresh, a fresh breath of fresh air to your life and to your home life. So like I said, it could be that you're moving to a new location. Either you're moving in with someone, someone's moving in with you, someone's moving out that's been oppressive. It, there could be a lot of changes with your, within your home. And you may feel like a new person, too. You may start to feel more empowered, especially as Pluto moves into Aquarius. So that's my reading for this month. If you like this reading, click on the like button. Click on the subscribe button. Leave me a comment and let me know what's going on in your life. Um, if you'd like a private reading, because this is general, it may not apply to everyone, um, click on the link in the description box and leave me, uh, and it'll take you to my website and we can get you scheduled. For reading. In the meantime, thank you for your support of this channel. Thank you for your likes, subscribes, and and your purchases. I wouldn't be here without your support. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're enjoying the videos. So have a wonderful April, Aquarius, and I'll talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.